I've turned on the Raggle Analyzer to let it warm up for 10 minutes or so. I've got it uh, just turned on and it's the full sweep here. Um, first thing we want to do is hit System over here and uh, hit Calibrate. Self-calibrate sounds right, but what that actually does is set it up to self-calibrate on a regular basis and it probably interferes with your measurements, so I don't normally use that. You can if you want to have it keep its calibration between measurements, uh, but just use a cal now. It's calculating, uh, calibrating here. Okay, now it's calibrated. Then hit uh, frequency. What we want to go to is uh, the 40 meter band because I'm going to be testing a 40 meter uh, transceiver little uh, QRP rig. So what I'm going to do is uh, put in 7, 2, 2, 0 kilohertz, which is 7.220 megahertz. And uh, then I'm going to make a span, which is 14 megs right now, of only uh, zero span. So zero hertz, as you can see up here. Uh, so now I'm only looking at that one frequency, but about 300, uh, well, let's look at the bandwidth here. Press that. We're at 300 kilohertz wide. We don't need that wide. We'll get everything in the entire band if we keep it there. So we'll make that uh, 30 kilohertz. Since we're not on an antenna, it won't matter that we ha might have signals on either side of this frequency. Uh, so that should pass any, any kind of an AM sideband or CW signal uh, and all its uh, sidebands and so forth. So that's a, a good uh, receive bandwidth to use. You could use 100 kilohertz. You could have left it at 300 kilohertz because we're not going to be connected to an antenna. I've put the uh, a 50 watt uh, 30 dB attenuator in here and you see we come up a little shy. This is only 38.8 or 765. It seems to be bouncing around because of the noise here. So we're off by about 2 dB um, in the attenuation. But as you can see, uh, the tracking generator uh, 0 dBm output has been attenuated to almost minus 40 dB here. So uh, what we do now uh, to calibrate this for use with the higher power amplifier, so we add that 40 dB back in. And we do that here by going to amplitude. Excuse me, I didn't get it there. And reference offset. Punch that up. It's at 0 dB now. We'll go 40 dB. Okay. So now you see that it still says 0 dBm here because we've got 40 dB of attenuation, but we've changed the reference by 40 dB. Actually, if I did it by 38 dB, it would uh, uh, also work. Let's do that. 38 dB. But that sort of makes things a little awkward in, in the scale here. And uh, I'd just as soon not do that. I think I'll just go with the... Uh, with the uh, 30 dB, or 40 dB, excuse me. I can always adjust for that uh, just by subtracting a couple of dB. All right, so, and let's uh, hit the peak here again. Yeah, so we're uh, about a dB off, a little bit more than a dB off. 
So that's probably good enough for the moment. All right, so now what we have here is 0 dB M, which this uh, represents, is uh, 1 milliwatt, so that's 10 milliwatts, 10 dBm. That's 20 milliwatt, uh, 100 milliwatts, or 20 dBm. That's 1 watt, or 30 dBm. That's 10 watts, or 40 dBm. And that's 100 watts, or 50 dBm. So that's what we can see on this spectrum analyzer now. And the uh, power pad and the other pad here will keep everything below the uh, plus 10 dBm that we had set to the uh, top of the reference here and not overload this spectrum analyzer. Got to be a little careful when you're doing this, but uh, once you make sure you've got it set up correctly, like this shows, uh, things should uh, work fine. And then we can uh, put uh, anything we want on the input to uh, this, this uh, power attenuator and measure its actual power in terms of dBm. Uh, we can actually, if you want to, uh, if you go to amplitude here, you can change the scale type as well. Right now, I have the units in dBm, but I could, if I wanted to, go to watts. Now you see it's 100 watts here, it's 10 watts there, it's 1 watt, 100 milliwatts, 10 milliwatts, and 1 milliwatt. So that gives us a very easy uh, scale to use. So let's uh, give it a shot, see what we got going. I've set up the uh, instrument now to uh, capture a single trace. I've uh, set the trigger type to video here. I've pressed the single mode here, and I pressed the button for a single uh, response, and it's waiting for the trigger here. I've got 50 milliseconds because it's voice that I'm going to be uh, transmitting, and uh, what I will do is to talk into my microphone on my FT991, which is going into the uh, 30 dB power pad here, and through the 10 uh, dB pad into the spectrum analyzer for a total of uh, 40 dB. Let's see what happens. Hello. So what we've got here is uh, my speech pattern on the FT991, and uh, let's see what we have for peak. The peak output here is 51.11 watts, so we're one watt off roughly, and uh, the power is set to uh, 50 watts on the radio. However, you know, that's a relative uh, figure, probably. It's close, but uh, anyway, so that's 50 watts. So we'll uh, take that trace, and uh, we'll hit trace here. And we will hit the clear right here, and we'll freeze it. So that that will stay there. Then we'll come up here and go to trace three, which is going to be blue. It's blank at the moment. We'll turn it on. And we'll put it on clear right. So now if I repeat this effort uh, with my low power SK1A QRP rig, we should see what its power output is and what its uh, um, speech pattern looks like. So I'll hit sweep, single. Now we're set up to do that. And I'll do that in a second here. Okay, I've hooked up the uh, SK-1A QRP rig, put it on a single sideband, 
at the same frequency here, which is uh, 7220. Well, looks like I got 7199 down there, but that's close enough. We got a 30 kilohertz bandwidth. Anyway, I've uh, set it up for single. And now I'll talk into the microphone and we'll see what it looks like uh, and what kind of power output it has. Hello. Okay, uh, looks pretty good. Uh, it's similar to uh, what we have here. And uh, let's see what the peak power on that is. So we'll go here to peak. And um, it says it's 6.2 watts on the peak, which is right over here. Sort of see it there. Uh, so it puts out about 6.2 watts at 7200 uh, 7.2 megahertz. So that's um, a little on the low side from what the spec is for the product. Uh, I'll have to call them about that. The other thing I found out was it stops at 7.2 and any, anything above that uh, restricts the transmitter. It doesn't uh, allow transmission. Perhaps a Canadian, uh, this is a Canadian product and maybe their band does not uh, cover those frequencies. I don't know. I don't have a manual for it yet, so uh, I really don't know if I've got things set up correctly. We'll have to take a uh, look at that, and I've um, the manual hasn't been written yet, but it will be online soon, so I will see what the story is. But as you can see, the uh, spectrum looks uh, fairly decent on this uh, product as far as the uh, uh, levels and um, lack of compression on the top. I've taken another uh, slice of life, so to speak, here by speaking into the SK-1A uh, QRP rigs uh, uh, microphone. Uh, what we have here is just the microphone keyed up with no audio. You can see there's some background noise being picked up as typical. This is a switching transient on switching the mic on or off. This is the carrier. It's at... Uh, 7199950, so it's fairly close to frequency. Um, the blue here is the uh, envelope of the uh, audio frequency range, in other words, the bandwidth of the thing. I have it set to, for this one and this one, I have it set to 100 hertz uh, bandwidth on the spectrum analyzer. It's 10 kilohertz across the screen here. And uh, so we see that we're down uh, 20 dB. Well, 20 dB down is uh, reasonable. This stuff is uh, also 20 dB down. It's a little marginally wide on that side and on that side. But um, uh, not any worse than somebody overdriving a linear amplifier, I, I suspect. But anyway, it is a little on the wide side. So probably you should use this as a QRP rig only, not with an amplifier. Um, the top line here, I put it back to 30 kilohertz to look at the PEP as I talked. And as you can see uh, on uh, number one here, uh, we're up there at, uh, let's see what it is here, peak. Uh, a second here. Why aren't we getting the peak here? Oh, well, let's see. Marker 1. Let's go to marker 1 here. Marker 1's at 4.02 watts PEP. So there you go. Um, that's uh, PEP because I have it 30 kilohertz wide getting everything here. Certainly well beyond the 10 kilohertz. Uh, this is uh, 100 hertz, so this shows the uh, audio response and any distortion that's there. And then the uh, purple here is just uh, no modulation, but uh, this is the leakage of the uh, carrier here at number two. So that uh, gives you a good idea of how you would set up for that. Uh, you uh, would uh, set it up for 10 kilohertz bandwidth and either 100 hertz for these two or... Uh, 30 kilohertz 
for that measurement. And you can do that individually and save and freeze each frame as you do it. Okay, I did the same thing for the FT991. I dropped its power down to uh, um, around 5 watts. Looks like uh, there was one peak there that's uh, 10 watts, which is I, I find interesting. Um, and it's overall a little higher in uh, power than the um, SK-1A when it's set to 5 watts on this same frequency here. You can see that we have a lot less uh, stuff getting out here and a little less out here. Uh, I've got this equalized uh, so that it's flat across here on my voice, as you can see. The other one was way down in here uh, for a good portion of the audio spectrum, so I would, I would think it would sound a little on the muffled side when uh, received. So we'll find that out later on the SK-1A, uh, but I suspect it's going to sound... Uh, somewhat restricted in its audio. I don't know how much of that's microphone and how much of that is the fact that it's got no equal equalizer. Uh, but uh, anyway, that'll be one of the other tests that I do.